Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 182 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week we bring back our friend Jason Belk. He hasn't been here in a while, Kareem. He has not. Yes, he's been behind the scenes working on some cool stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, AI, AI is all the hotness. Um, and people are sometimes like, how do I actually take care of this stuff? Jason's going to show us how to run an LLM locally and with ease. Uh, Jason, for the new snackers, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and then let's get right into it. Sure. Hi, I'm Jason Belk. I'm a technical advocate here in the Learning, Learning with Cisco organization. Work with Kareem very closely. And so I'm thrilled here to share what we've been working on together in terms of AI here within Learning Certifications. I, I didn't build this stuff, but I, I want to share just what we're learning along the way. Yeah, thank you. I, I think a lot of our snackers are, are pretty interested in this stuff. Kareem and I kind of talk about it conceptually for the most part, but um, I think being able to run an LLM locally um, is the kind of baseline for getting this stuff executed. So um, what are we looking at? Yeah, yeah. just to kind of set the stage a little bit, for those who are unaware, when you're using something like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, when you're sending out your requests, they actually go out to somebody else's computer. <laughs> and so they own your data. There's you know privacy considerations, especially you know if you're in an enterprise environment or, or even just you're a privacy conscious person. And so for, for those of you who want to be able to run, uh, let's say a, a smaller version of that same model that's from a lot of situations, just as effective. There's something called LM Studio, which okay. is oh. freely available. It's, it's not open source, but it's also the, the, the licensing basically allows you to get up and running quickly and aim, able to play around with models. And then so LM Studio is basically almost like your VS Code, your, your editing environment. And then it allows you to load in these different L, LLM models, such as the Olama from Meta. And those are freely available as well. So they... Basically, this gives you the opportunity to then ask questions, basically have your own prompting scenario locally in terms of a chat environment. And then there's even advanced plugins to be able to do from a development perspective and even run it as a, its own server. This is something that I just install an application that I installed. Does it come pre-built with uh, LLMs or, or models or do I have to go out to like hugging face and get the model that I need? Yeah, so once you install the application locally, and I'm sharing my screen that right now, I already have the model installed, but the way after you've installed the application, you install the models, it has its own plugin that reads from Hugging Face, where Hugging Face is basically the GitHub of large language models. And they have, as you can see on the screen here, lots of different models available to you. I'd say the one that people are probably don't want to go towards is Deep Sea because the, the, for you know, privacy considerations, even though it's not talking out to the outside world. I know there's, that's one of the models on there, but the one that I used was from Olama from Meta. And so from here, basically you can pick the model that you want. If you don't know which model to pick, I'd say just kind of research on the line what a good one is. I, I started with the Meta Llama um, one and it downloads it locally to your machine and you don't have to do any kind of fancy configuration beyond that after it loads in after a few minutes, then you have a prompt up and you can ask it questions. You can go into Hugging Face and download them manually and load them in manually. But I'd say for most people, what I'm envisioning, people who are watching this episode saying, hey, I've played around with ChatGBT and maybe I want to do this locally and I'm not like strong with AI or I'm not necessarily strong with coding even. This provides a user interface for you to be able to easily integrate with these systems that are providing these free and open source models. And you just kind of click to download and get up and running fairly quickly. That's awesome. Ooh. From your experience, I'm curious when you, um, when you ran, I know when you're running it uh, locally or you're bringing, you're, bring, you're downloading an LLM, um, it's, not up, it's not the latest models that are out there. Is that true? And if, and, and if it is, how, how does it compare to things like Claude uh, and Gemini and with the latest LLMs that they have? I'd, I'd say you can get the latest models that are free. So uh, Meta has their models that they're continuing to evolve over time. And so like the one that we're using here is, is I think, just a few months old. But I, I'd say they're also smaller models. So they're not going to boil the ocean, solve every possible problem. What I've been doing is just playing around with different network engineering scenarios. So I'd say from smaller use cases, kind of what you're going to do just in terms of your your local environment. This isn't something I would set for production for my whole team necessarily, but it'd be like you getting used to AI in your local environment and saying what, what's possible for AI with me. And I, I haven't seen any huge limitations. Like when I'm putting, I'll put in a sample prompt in here 
for explaining how BGP selects the best path when multiple routes are available, includes steps and key attributes like weight, local preference, and AS path. And you know, it then gives me a response. So I'm using the MetaLlama 3.1 8B instruct model, and it, it then provides us a response. So just like you're using with, with, with ChatGPT, I'd say I, I'm not an AI expert in terms of being able to give you the exact precision in terms of how this model compares to the GPT 4.0, but I, I would say for a lot of the situations that we're, we're looking at as network engineers, this is probably good enough. It, it's only taking up about five gigabytes of hard, hardware space on, on, on my um, laptop, and, and I'm able to run it locally with, within my MacBook Pro. Now, does this allow me to also, does LM Studio allow me to do ragging and, yeah. and maybe attach an MCP server or something to it? You took the words right out of my mouth, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played around with MPC, NCD servers, I, but they do have an ability to basically plug in your own code. So I'll, I'll show an example of, they have a, a Python library called LM Studio, where basically, basically you can set up a transaction handler to establish connection. Right now I'm establishing a, a, like a local REST, behind the scenes it's using REST to my um, LM Studio that before I actually run that code, let me show you on the side here, we have our chat that we're using where you can put in your different prompts. We have our developer mode where you can turn on your, your local server and it's running on local host port 1234. And then when I run the, the Python library I'm about to show you, it'll basically just do a REST call behind the scenes. It has a wrapper around the REST API for that. And now if I go back to the Python code, we were importing LM Studio as LMS and we create a model object telling us which model, and it's the only model I have installed, so I just tell it which model I'm going to work with, and I can say model.respond and put in my prompt. So I was saying write an access list to deny telnet traffic from a certain IP address subnet, allow all other, all other traffic, assume Cisco IOS, and print the result from that. And, and I, I've noticed even though it is a local host, it does take five or six seconds for, for it to be able to send the request, process the request, and then and then, and then send it back. Um, but th this LM Studio does have the ability for you to run it as its own server. So if you're running this in your organization, you could even have this on like a headless server somewhere that you're, you're running requests against. And we see the response came back. So um, like I said, in, in terms of like performance and, and actually getting results that seem good, like it's saying, you know, create a new ACL and it has, you know, the ACL syntax and it has explanation. So this this could be something that you could maybe even integrate into a chat bot and, and ha have it toss in questions and, and, and provide some answers. I, I, I would kind of caution you can, people to not necessarily do this in huge production environments. This is more just kind of for local testing, maybe your local team type things. But it at least gives you an experience where... You, you completely own the data. It's not being sent out to anybody else. You're able to work with these fairly sophisticated models that can run on hardware, hardware that, that's not that beefed up. Well, I mean, I can see the quickest use case the, for me right now. I mean, essentially what you did, Jason, was build a, a quick little agent. Yep. And so we can start to, within a contained environment that doesn't cost us anything in theory, um, start to play out how these agents would interact with each other. For testing reasons without running out of tokens, actually. Exactly, so exactly. You're not, yeah, yeah. yeah. And before you go to production, this actually makes a lot of sense. So, uh, you know, granted, you'll, you'll probably get different uh, answers from the different models given how well they're trained. But regardless, it's, I think this is uh, a really good first step when, when you're writing an agent before you actually go out and sub and, and get a, a production ready model. Yeah, yeah man. This is friggin' sweet. <laughs> no, for sure. And, and LM Studio, I don't have a demo set up for this necessarily, but they also have programmatic ways to execute these calls kind of in sequence in a more agent way that you're talking about as well. Yeah. Is there, um, and forgive me, uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. Is there a low code, no code within the interface that allows you to chain those, those agents together? Not that I'm aware of. In terms of the interface, the, the low code part is just kind of the prompting back and forth. The, the, the other Got it. interface that people typically use for interacting with these open source models is called Olama, where basically Meta has their own CLI interface where, where you can download the models. And not have, but I think for folks who are getting up and running and just want to play around with it, having a GUI that you can just click and install and have it up and running, and then even have development for those who, who want to play around with it a little deeper, just helps folks feel like they can play around with data that might be more sensitive and, and not have any worry about going out to the public internet. Yeah, I think this is a brilliant way. I mean, just for, you know, 
I'll, I'll still say I'm at the beginning of my my uh, AI journey, and I'm intrigued by by leveraging this tool to to start to kick the tires. Um, thanks for showing this, Jason. This is yeah, fantastic. Jason. Thank you so much. Before before I let you go, I'm gonna I'm also gonna put you on the spot. Why LM Studio versus something like Cursor or whatever other IDE that's out there? Sure. So so my my playing around with cursors that it actually talks out to those outside models. Mm. I, I think you can set up, you know, other models with it, but it requires a little bit more effort on your part. So I say generally with cursor, it's where you're like, I, I want to pay for a subscription and have it actually talk to Gemini, Claude, OpenAI. And and your cursor is, I'd say, more effective at loading in the context of all of the code that you're working on and then giving you that contextual feedback loop. Where this is more almost just like and uh, a wrapper around the model. You're just giving you a way to access the model in an, in an easy way, to just purely interacting with the model w- without having any other kind of additional features around it, even though you can build on top of it. I'd say natively, it, it's it's more of like a playground for your playground where I say cursor is more designed for developers who are trying to enable their productivity. Good. That's a good answer. Thank you, Jason. Cool. Yeah, well, Jason, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, that's all the time we have uh, this week. Um, snackers, uh, feel free to go check out LM Studio and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, guys.